Just a few days ago, the Japanese Prime Minister made this public quote. Nuclear power and renewables are essential to proceed with a green transformation. Russia's invasion changed the global energy situation. Look, I don't know anyone else other than myself in the financial world that has written two best-selling books, and both books included a chapter about uranium. As one of the few professional investors and the largest independent financier who has invested in uranium for over 20 years, I can say with some authority that uranium is creeping closer to its final inflection point. In July of 2022, the EU publicly stated that nuclear power would qualify as a green investment beginning in January 1st, 2023. That's a monumental statement. It pays the way for a plethora of tax and policy incentives to build out nuclear power plants. But keeping the momentum going, in a major policy shift, Japan just announced it's going to restart several nuclear reactors over the next 12 months. Why? It has no choice. The market for uranium stocks went bananas on this news. Most companies were up double digit percentage points. Understandably, the scars from Fukushima run deep in Japan. It was a horrific event, a major black eye for the nuclear sector. The big deal, Japan's nuclear face about. Japan is the world's third largest economy and fifth largest greenhouse gas emitter. It has been stretching its power grid to the max since Fukushima meltdown in early 2011. Prior to Fukushima, 30% of Japanese electricity was produced by nuclear power. Post Fukushima, Japan immediately shut down all of its 54 nuclear reactors. Today, nuclear power produces just under 7% of Japan's electricity needs. However, an earthquake recently knocked out power and stretching the remaining power lines beyond the max. This is the second major power crunch felt by Japan, which could have been avoided if the country was running a full power grid. The politicians of Japan are left with few other options than to return to nuclear as a key source of baseload power. Japan's pledge to become carbon neutral by 2050. To meet its global climate commitments, the country will need to restart almost every nuclear reactor it shuttered in the aftermath of the 2011 meltdowns, and then build more. Its forecast to meet the Paris goals, Japanese nuclear power needs to make up about 22% of its energy mix by 2030. That's a threefold increase from today's levels. With carbon prices in the EU making record highs recently, Japan's pivot will be critical in the country's energy policy. Energy transition or energy nightmare. Worldwide, the energy transition and natural disasters are throwing new challenges at utilities, stretching the power grids and triggering blackouts. This threatens economies who are reliant on single fuel sources for large portions of their electricity generation. Europe is caught in a firestorm of challenges as the continents once led the way in decarbonization efforts focusing on renewable power. However, Retiring its nuclear power post Fukushima left it highly susceptible to Russian natural gas, which in the wake of the war in Ukraine has now created a continent-wide crisis. On the other side of the world, China is feeling the heat, literally. The historic drought in China is one that many citizens have never seen before. Extreme heat has taken its toll on China's hydro generation, which accounts for about 18% of the country's electricity generation. Low flow rates reduce hydropower electricity production. Contrary to its sustainability goals, this led to a slew of new coal plants being permitted in China. Steady Eddy Power I've long stated that uranium has the potential to play a key role in base load power generation. As the only zero emission base load fuel option, it makes all the sense in the world for nuclear to be an important segment of global electricity generation. The chart you're looking at right now is the baseload power generation CO2 emissions. So if you look at coal, obviously it's the dirty one. Petroleum, believe it or not, still there's power plants being fueled by petroleum. Natural gas by no means is the same. And nuclear, once built and producing, produces zero CO2 emissions. Now, many uranium haters will highlight the radioactive toxic waste as an issue. And that's a good point. It is true. However, those are the old, what are called Gen 1, Gen 2 generators, which are also the ones that caused the meltdowns in Chernobyl and Fukushima. The new generation reactors that have evolved and ones developed by companies like Bill Gates' Terra Power, X Energy, and others are meltdown proof and do not produce radioactive waste. Furthermore, they're smaller, 
making them modular and hence faster to construct, not the big 10, 15 year builds with the ability to load balance. That's a phrase you're going to hear a lot about in the future. The catch, look, it still takes a long time to jump through the bureaucratic hoops and get uranium nuclear power projects financed. But uranium has had incredible booms and busts and perhaps more so than any other commodity in history. The next chart you're looking at is the historical price of uranium going back to 1930. As you can see, when the price of uranium moves, it moves big and fast. Look at that chart, 14 fold, 12 fold. We're just in the early innings of the next big run. The latest collapse from 2009 through 2020 was sparked by the massive decline in uranium consumption from Japan, obviously because of Fukushima. In 2011, before the Fukushima disaster, there were 442 nuclear reactors in operation globally. Today, there are 438 in operation with another 56 under construction. Japan currently has 33 reactors in operation. And according to the Japanese officials, the initial restart could bring another seven back online within the next 12 months. Uranium price moves. Recently, uranium prices have begun to tick back up as spot market inventory began to dry up thanks to buyers like the Uranium Trust and Uranium Royalty Corp. This has sent prices up 40% over the past 12 months and nearly 100% since the beginning of the pandemic. That's the chart you're looking at right now, the actual physical spot price of the uranium returns. With minimal inventory available for immediate delivery, that's the spot market. This opens up the potential for a big squeeze in uranium if the utilities need to source a lot of material quickly. Recall, Russia and Russian allies produce half of the uranium consumed worldwide. Now, this next chart is very important. This is the uranium forecast. The chart shows the current supply and demand scenario. If this chart is any indication, we could be heading for another major spike in uranium prices. The phasing out of fossil fuels in favor of clean baseload power like uranium, coupled with intermittent renewable energy sources, provides a zero emission, reliable and scalable fuel stack. Japan is not alone in its quest for curbing greenhouse gas emissions. This is a worldwide goal, and I believe decarbonization represents the single greatest risk adjustment investment opportunity of my lifetime. To find out how I'm positioning myself and my two major holdings in the uranium sector, click here to become a member of the KRO, which is the premium paid research service of the Katusa Resource Opportunities. Stay safe. Subscribe to the KRO, which is the Katusa Resource Opportunities, to find out exactly what prices I'm buying at and what price I sell at before the trade occurs. And you get to excel before I do. If you want to give your portfolio an edge, consider becoming a member and giving it a try for yourself.